Hello everyone, this is your Ecology host Chuck Ghost and welcome to the very first Think Tank episode. So what is that? Well, it's a brand new style of Ecology episode where I bring up a topic and get thinkers to share their ideas on it. It's a twist on the traditional Q&A style with just one guest, which I've always done, but a twist that I hope you'll enjoy. Now, due to some scheduling conflicts and last minute notice, the first episode is going to be just me. So it's a very small tank with maybe one fish in it. But it's so timely that I didn't want to wait any longer. So you're going to just get my thoughts on this topic. Today, June 26th, hundreds of Wayfair employees walked out of work as promised. Now, if you're not familiar with Wayfair, they're an online furniture retailer. I myself have purchased things from Wayfair in the past. And for those that aren't familiar with the Wayfair walkout, Here's the background as I understand it. Wayfair sold furniture and beds through a government contractor that is being used at these immigration detention centers. Now, assuming is always dangerous, but I'm going to assume that the company knew this is where the furniture was going, that it wasn't going to a summer camp somewhere. So we're going to assume the company leaders knew that this furniture being sold was ending up at these detention centers. Employees voice their concerns internally at first. I think this is an important thing to think about. They went to the leaders first to say they disagreed with this part of the business. Now, those employees also were not satisfied with the company's response and shared it on social. So again, it didn't stay just inside the company's walls. These employees shared this out on social. And the initial employee that shared this did not have a large following. I think at the time he joked he had 12 followers. I don't know if that's true or not, but he did not have a large following, but it made a lot of headway very quickly and spread and now has its own Twitter account at Wayfair Walkout. So from there, now it has spread everywhere. Even other companies have said that they are not going to do business with Wayfair until they end that practice. I know one company that did did this and shared it on Twitter was Square, that they weren't gonna stop doing business with Wayfair until they ended this contract. And again, not verified, just from what I read, what was this all for? Well, this news outlet reported that the contract was valued at around $86,000 in profit. I don't know what the total contract value was, but the estimate is around $86,000 in profit. So these employees raised the concerns to leaders. Leaders answered back saying, we hear your concerns, you have a right to your opinion, but we're sticking by the contract. Now, Wafer made a gamble on this, maybe that's the wrong word to use, but they, I guess, called the employees bluff is what it feels like, that they weren't going to walk out. And I would say they lost on that because again, hundreds of employees at Wayfair walked out today. Now there is the saying that all publicity is good publicity. And I've always hated that saying, it's false, it's not true. This is not good for the company. There's no good publicity coming out of this. And it impacts things so far beyond, even if you just look at the bottom line of individual consumers, who said they're going to stop doing business with Wayfair, companies who've said they're starting doing business with Wayfair. This goes beyond even that from a bottom line standpoint. So you might be wondering, well, what does this have to do with comms? And let's go back to that initial thing that happened. Those employees shared this news first. They didn't just run out to Twitter, run out to Facebook, Instagram, and say our company is doing these awful things, or they think they're doing these awful things. They addressed it with leadership first, which I would think is is a comms win from that standpoint. It was then the loss of that when the the company responded that the information was then shared externally, which has now added the viral nature to it. And if there's a right away, one key lesson here for companies to learn is the true power in the employee voice. What that one employee, dozens, which now turn into hundreds, the power of that voice has. And my guesstimate is that Wayfair underestimated 
that power that individual employee voice. Now, something I'm really curious about is what kind of counsel did Wayfair leadership seek out when they initially responded to employees? If they had responded in a different way, this Wayfair walkout might not even be a thing. And I'm curious also is if the communicator or communicators, were they involved? How were they involved in that process? Because there is an internal comms function at Wayfair. I did do a little bit of my own research here. And I did reach out to those communicators, but have not uh, heard back from them. And justifiably so. I can't even imagine what today is like for those internal communicators. But if I do hear back, I would love to have them on as a follow-up to this episode to get a little bit more of that background. For one, I would love to know if they participated in the walkout. Where does your belief stop and your company job begin? And I would also like to know what happened in communication between company leaders and employees that maybe we didn't see shared on Twitter. We might think everything that we see on Twitter is the whole story, but I would love to know, was there more back and forth? Was there more dialogue that took place between leadership and employees? Because if you think, if you're an internal communicator and you're thinking, oh, my company is immune to this, this would, could never happen to us, you're wrong, dead wrong. Every single company could face something like this. I'm sure those Wayfair employees, 